All praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rechak Wadash, the Ba Honors, to the Apostles, the Elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, Salutations, to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, Shalom, to the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalom, to you. And as you see, U.S. British militaries launch a massive retaliatory strike against Iranian backed Houthis in Yemen. So, this is going to cause the least of the flock to draw them out because what's going to happen is that Iran, which is um, Elam in the scriptures, and Ishmael, all right, which is the Palestinians that they call themselves today, the Palestinians is Ishmael in the scriptures, and they're going to come together. And that's what's going to make, you know, United States to come on the behalf of of the Israelis, the small hats. So the least of the flock is going to draw them out. That's um Jeremiah 49 and 20. But I want to get before I play that video. It said, but I will remove far off from you the northern army that's talking about America. And I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face towards the East Sea, which is the Red Sea, and his hinder parts towards the utmost sea, which is the Persian Gulf. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. So the Lord is going to judge them over there in the Arabian desert, which is in Saudi Arabia. And right now, the Houthis is south of Saudi Arabia. They're right under Saudi Arabia. All right. So they already in that region already. So the Lord is making good on his word. Genuinely can't believe that we've gotten to this point. The United States tonight bombed Yemen. You heard that right. The United States and British militaries bombed more than a dozen sites in Yemen tonight. Those targets included logistical hubs, air defense systems and weapon storage and launching locations, according to reports. The president of the United States went so far as to say that these strikes are in direct response to unprecedented Houthi attacks against international maritime vessels in the Red Sea, including the use of anti-ship ballistic missiles for the first time in history. These attacks have endangered U.S. personnel, civilian mariners, and our partners, jeopardized trade, and threatened freedom of navigation. Notice how at no point in this statement does he mention why Ansar Allah was attacking maritime vessels in the Red Sea in the first place. Yemeni forces are responding to Israeli genocide in Gaza, and they've been and that's another thing, too. So, you know, what the Israelis been doing to the Palestinians, a lot of nations is not for what they're doing. So what the Lord is doing, as it's saying, Obadiah 1 and 2, I should make you small among the heathen. You are greatly despised. So everybody is despising the small hats and also America because, you know, America backs up the Israelis. So the Lord is making good on his word. All we have to do is continue to stay prayed up, continue to prophesy of the events that the Lord foretold us through the Holy Spirit. So beautiful. And yeah, man, we almost out of here. And plus, what have to come before World War Three be full fledged before missiles drop the mark of the beast? So the dollar will crash, according to Bible prophecy. And as you see, World War Three is brewing up. So that means that the dollar is going to crash very soon. Just for a sidebar. Incredibly clear about their tactics and their goals. Yemeni forces, Ansar Allah, have been enforcing a narrow blockade, right? Targeting Israeli vessels or Israeli linked vessels or ships that are going to and from Israeli ports. The goal of that blockade is incredibly clear. Ansar Allah is trying to stop a genocide. Because as Yemen commits to this narrow blockade, Israel has committed to an outright genocide in the Gaza Strip, killing more than 30,000 Palestinians. And listen, all I'm doing is reporting on the news. So you shouldn't take down my video just for reporting on the news, okay? Um, but let me get a scripture before this video finish out. So this is what's going to happen to the big bad wolf. America. The Elam and Ishmael is going to come together. 
And it says, Behold, a horrible vision and an appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that all they which hear they may fear and tremble. Also the Carmanians, that's the Elam, that's the East Indians. That's uh Carmanians is their ancient name. I think that name was changed from Carmanians in the nineteen thirties, if I'm not mistaken. Look it up. So it said also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. See, Elam and Ishmael will come together to destroy Babylon the Great. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And then shall the dragons have their upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power to persecute them. Them is talking about the small hats and the Americans, the Israelis and the Americans. Then these shall be trouble bled, kept silence through their power, and shall flee. And from the land of the Assyrians, which Assyrians is a Ishmael tribe. They are, they are, they are an Arabian tribe. Um, I was doing some research, and it's 28, this according to Google, it's 28 Arabian tribes. So the Assyrians, not the ancient Assyrians, all right, the neo because the Babylonians and the, the Neo-Babylonians and the Assyrians are the same. And they are an Arabian tribe. All right. One of them. All right. So um, it said from the land of the Assyrians should the enemy besiege them. Now, we just read in Joel um, 2 and 20 uh, where that um, barren and desolate land is going to be. That's in the Arabian desert, which is um, Saudi Arabia in that region. And... It's foretold that that's where they're going to be destroyed at all through the scriptures, especially the one that said that the least of the flock should draw them out. And the cry of them was heard in the Red Sea. So Joel 2 and 20 was going into the landmass that America will be drawn to and being destroyed at, which is between the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, which is the Arabian Desert, which is in the uh, region of Saudi Arabia. So this is where, and from the land of the Assyrians, which is the Arabian tribes, shall the enemy besiege them, consume some of them, and in their hosts shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Because nobody ever thought that America would lose a war. Nobody ever thought that America would fall. But see, the Lord said that everything in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Also, that's in um Second Edwards 95. And also... And if, uh, Jeremiah 51 and 9, we will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. So everything have a beginning and end, all right, except for our kingdom. So it said, behold, clouds from the east. So this is the rest of the nations getting into it. Before I, I read that, I'm going to go back to the video. Palestinians injuring tens of thousands more and displacing well right genocide in the Gaza Strip, killing more than 30,000 Palestinians, injuring tens of thousands more and displacing well over a million. Ansar Allah is trying to stop a genocide, and the United States responded to that by bombing them. I want all of us to... That's why the Lord called them the hammer of the earth. And also in Jeremiah 50 and 23, the hammer of the earth scripture, it said, how have the hammer of earth uh, cut asunder? Is it? I think that's what it said. Or how did the hammer of the earth cease? Hold on, let me see. It said, how is the hammer of the earth? Yeah, cut asunder. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? See, that is the foretelling of the future of America. All right. They're going to lose the war in the Middle East. And then the nations is going to shoot missiles on America. And that's where you go into Revelation, you know, 17, 16 down to 18. And then all of Revelation 18 think about that for a second especially those of us who live in the united states our government instead of trying to stop a genocide decided to bomb a sovereign country so this guy is an american and as you see a kingdom divided against himself cannot stand he's on the side like so you american right and you're speaking against your own country 
So the government, he, he they will look at him like a terrorist, you know, because he's speaking against the government, um, America military and the Israelis, which is a no, no, but this is just, a um, showing you that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. All right. So it's, so it's too many ideologies, too many different beliefs. This is why the Lord called this the melting pot. Also Babylon, the great Babal. All right. Confusion. All right. So this place is just going to fall. All right. To defend the perpetrators rather than allowing Yemeni forces to continually apply economic pressure to an entity that is committing genocide. The United States is bombing them trying to get them to stop, doing everything they can to bring things back to normal as Palestinians die by the tens of thousands. This is a government that very clearly does not give a fuck about anything but death. What you expect is Esau Edom, all right? But see, the people are waking up, but as they say, it's strength in numbers. See, the Lord said that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, Jeremiah, I mean, Joel 2 and 28. So that's why you have a lot of whistleblowers. You got a lot of people who, you know, woke up to the devil, you know, um, atrocities, you know, they speak on it. You got a lot of people talking about the mark of the beast too, which is sad that false prophets out here, but that's why they call false prophets. They're not speaking about the mark of the beast, but regular civilians know what the mark of the beast is. So yeah, so the Lord is pouring his spirit upon all flesh. And um, you got people, he's prophesying, even though he, he ain't using those scriptures, but he's prophesying right now because he basically, he's, he's talking about the hammer of the earth and how all they want to do is kill and hey, 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 the wicked. All right. The scripture said, uh, there is no peace unto the wicked, save the Lord. Peace do not follow them. Destruction, misery, and the advancement of imperialist goals. And that is something really worth thinking on for all of us, especially as our government commits to actions that could cause an outright regional war, a regional war that will have been started because we wanted to defend perpetrators of a genocide. It's fucking. And that's why the least of the flock is going to draw them out. So let me get back to the scriptures. So verse 34, behold, clouds from the east, from the north, from the south, that they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. So this is the Lord bringing all the nations together to fight World War Three. All right. They shall smite one upon another and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars. That's the missiles upon the earth, even their own star. And the blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. So it's going to be a lot of bloodshed, dung of men unto the camel's hole. And there shall be great filthiness and terrible upon the earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid. That's where that, um, you know, people crying, uh, what it says, standing afar off, seeing the torment of her smoke. So that, that's, that's actually, um, that's actually the end game for, uh, Babylon the Great. But I keep on quoting it. I want to get this because the point is in 22. When, <clears throat> so it said, therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh, he that take a counsel against Edom and his purposes that he had proposed against the inhabitants of Teman, that's the Germans. Surely least of the flock should draw them out. Surely he should make their habitations desolate with them. See, they're going to be destroyed over there. The, the, the small hats and the Americans, the earth is moved at the noise of their fall and their cry. At the cry, the noise there was heard in the Red Sea. They in the Red Sea right now. Fighting in the Red Sea right now. All right. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty man of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pain. So because when he do come up there, like he the big bad wolf, he's going to get his chest inflated. He came up there with his chest out, think he about to do something. But the Lord got another plans. So go back to finish this off. And there should be great fearfulness and terrible trembling upon the earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid of trembling shall come upon them. All right. So, amen. The Lord is making good on his promise. Bless are your eyes that they see. Bless are your ears for they hear. Bless is your heart that's able to understand this. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this video is edifying. And Shalom.